Welcome back to our channel. I am Tanya, aka Monarch, and this is everybody's favorite dog, Sophie. Say hello. Say no, I want to go back to sleep, mommy. Okay. Welcome back to my channel, and today we are going to talk about expenses that people forget to budget for for an AT through hike. Sounds like fun. Actually, this is one of the most frequently asked questions. Um, what should my overall budget be? Most people when they're putting together their budget, they're thinking about things like resupply for food, obviously a big one. Um, they think, okay, I'm gonna stay in a hostel or hotel here or there along the trail. I'm gonna have some shuttles. I may have to, you know, I'm gonna have to replace my shoes and they, you know, try to budget for that kind of thing. And all of that is important and all of that is true. But there are a lot of things that people forget to budget for. There's the unexpected, there are medical expenses, there's weather, there's all kinds of things that can happen while you're on trail that you didn't budget for and now you've gone over budget. And one of the things that gets people off trail is running out of money. So I'm gonna to try to help you either budget appropriately or prevent from running out of money so that you can finish your through hike. All right, so here we go. Number one thing that people forget to budget for, guarantee this is going to happen. You're going to have unexpected stays at hotels and hostels. There's a lot of reasons why that might happen. One of them is weather. Um, doesn't matter when you start, you're probably going to experience some bad weather at some point on the trail. It could be a snowstorm. It could be a extremely heavy rain and lightning storm, especially if you're further up north and you are in exposed areas. Um, I actually zeroed out a day of uh, thunderstorms with lightning and 70 mile per hour winds was supposed to be the day we were going over Mount Washington. We decided to zero that out and not experience that. <laughs> um, snowstorms I zeroed out two, one in March, one in April. Um, and heat, believe it or not, the heat can get so bad that it is dangerous for you to be out on trail, whether it is the actual temperature or the combination of the heat and the humidity together. Heat exhaustion is just as serious as, uh, and dehydration are just as serious as um, frostbite and hypothermia in the winter. And for some reason, people seem to think, oh, it's nice out, it's sunny out, I, I'm hot, but I'm just gonna push through. And then now you've got a medical condition, which is another thing we're gonna talk about that can get you off trail as well. So um, weather, definitely unexpected um, hotel and hostel stays. Um, illness. I hope you don't get sick on trail, but it's very likely that it's going to happen. It could be anything from the stomach flu to norovirus or giardia or COVID. Um, there was an outbreak of COVID in the huts when we were in New Hampshire. We weren't in the huts, but I know several people who had to get off trail anywhere from five to 14 days due to COVID. Um, I personally got sick on trail. I was fortunate that I was in an area that was near my Tramalay's family. So I was able to stay with his sister um, and get nursed back to health. Um, I either had a really bad stomach flu or a mild case of norovirus. It lasted for like 36 hours. Um, I know a couple who got Giardia in New York and had to get off trail for a week. Um, so there's a variety of reasons why you're unexpectedly getting off trail and more than likely getting a hostel or hotel from anywhere from a day or two to two weeks. Um, and then last is injury. Again, I really hope you don't have to get off trail due to injury, but you probably are going to have to. Um, injury could come in the form, this kind of falls in between illness and injury. Uh, for me, like I got poison ivy. A ton of people, a lot of people got poison ivy and had to get off trail for that and go to, um, you know, see urgent care, maybe especially in the heat of summer, maybe take a couple of days for the medicine to start, you know, getting the blistering down. Um, I had to get off trail twice. So it's extra hotel, it's extra shuttle. Um, my hiking partner actually had a hernia. He wound up with a double hernia and we got off trail. He, he got off trail before he started hiking with me. So he got off trail twice for it and we got off trail to go to the ER. Um, there's so many different types of injuries. I mean, gosh, just so many. There's foot injuries, knee injuries. You know, you fall, you cut yourself, you get concussions. I mean, I, I saw everything I just mentioned. I saw on trail and people have to get off trail for that. Sometimes you may have to get off trail, go home for a couple of weeks to let an injury heal. So now you've got travel and transportation involved even in that unexpected expense. Sometimes you just need to get off trail for a night or two get a hotel, stay at a hostel, but these are all unexpected expenses that you need to have some extra cushion in your overall budget to accommodate um, 
in this particular one, I'm talking about the hotel and hostel stays, but along with that, you've got to get off trail and get to the hotel or hostel. So usually that's an extra expense in a shuttle. And if it's illness or injury, you may also have to include medical visits, which brings us to point number two, medical concerns and the appropriate um, prescriptions or medicine that you need to go along with that. So as I mentioned, I got off trail twice to go to urgent care to get shots and prescriptions for poison ivy. Um, I probably should have had my feet looked at because I was dealing with plantar fasciitis. Uh, so in my world, I had two urgent care costs, which were $150 each. I had prescriptions, which were um, like around $100 each time. I had extra medicinal things that I needed to bring with the poison ivy, some bandaging, uh, poison ivy wash, tech new gel, things like that. Um, and then for my feet with plantar fasciitis, I was constantly trying to buy various insoles or I was buying, you know, contraptions to like prop your feet up. So, you know, to help them heal and ankle wraps and like all kinds of things is supposed to help with, um, Achilles tendonitis and plantar fasciitis. I got sick. Um, I didn't have any type. Oh, and Benadryl for, but, oh my gosh, I went through Benadryl and Advil PM like crazy. I spent a ton of extra money on just buying those all the time. Um, but when I got sick, like I didn't have any, uh, Pepto or Tums or anything like that in my medicine kit. And honestly, I was so sick it wouldn't have helped. But I do know there was a guy on trail in North Carolina who had zeroed in his tent and was asking like every hiker who walked by if they had any type of Pepto or Tums. Tums. He wasn't throwing up like I was, but he was very nauseous feeling and, you know, was experiencing something on trail. Um, so whether it's an actual prescription and a visit to the ER or to the urgent care or, you know, some other sort of illness or injury that's maybe ongoing and is going to start adding up as you're going through the months and the miles, um, you definitely have to budget extra because most people I know who hiked from Georgia to Maine got off trail at some point or another due to illness or injury. So again, back to point one, you've got the hotel, you got some transportation, you've got, um, you're eating food in town, then usually not eating the food in your pack. And now you've got medical bills from ER or urgent care and prescriptions. Okay. Point number three, this is so fun, especially because I hiked in 2022. Inflation. You don't think inflation's going to hit over the course of six months terribly bad until it was the year 2022. What I budgeted for when I was getting, I got on trail March 3rd. So I was setting my budget like December, January into February. The cost of things back then were not what they were by July, August, and September of 2022. Like things skyrocketed in 2022. So inflation hit especially hard that I noticed it was in shuttles because gas, I mean, $6 a gallon for gas, shuttle drivers don't have a choice but to raise their prices. Um, some hostels that previously included shuttles had to start charging. Again, they didn't really have a choice. Um, hostels that may have previously provided breakfast included or dinner included were now charging or they were raising their cost. Um, from, you know, I had seen some that was like $5 if you wanted breakfast. Well, now it's $8 if you want breakfast or, you know, things like that. So inflation hit and you, you just, you're living in a world where other people have to make a living and you're using their services. So you got to pay the shuttle driver more. Uber costs went up, um, in some places where there weren't shuttles and we had to do Ubers. Um, especially when we were getting off trail for like the poison ivy and things like that. Um, and, uh, food. So <laughs> what I was paying for like five days in like Georgia and Tennessee, the further north you go, food gets more expensive in general by the time you hit the mid-Atlantic states and the northeast. But I mean, I was paying like $4 for a cliff bar when I was in Connecticut. I remember especially, I was like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> I got a resupply and this is my options and it's like $4. So I was re resupplying for like three days for the same cost or actually even more for what I was doing for four to five days back in the South. So one, the North is more expensive. So budget for that, but especially, you know, you're further down the line. And if 2023 and beyond is anything like 2022 was the cost of food went up as well. So, um, food, shuttles, hotels, everything that you're doing on trail is costing more gear, which brings us to our next point Four, gear repair and replacement costs went up with inflation. What I paid before getting on trail for some of the things were twice the price when I was seeing them in outfitters further down the trail by the time I was in Maine in, you know, September. It, it was insane how much some of the things had gone up. 
Um, so, but you, no matter what, you are going to have gear repair and replacement. So the inflation part aside, you have to budget. Um, a lot of people think about like, okay, I'm going to have to replace my socks and my shoes and budget for that. So shoes alone on average are about $150 per pair. And you're probably going to go through four to five pairs of them. I'm talking in general because most people use, use trail runners and that's about the lifespan of a trail runner is around 500 miles. So you're going to go through four, maybe five pairs of trail runners. Boots may last you longer. I had a hybrid and they lasted about 700 miles on average. I think I got 800 out of one pair of them. Um, but Again, you need to budget probably between six to eight hundred dollars just for shoe replacement. Um, socks depends on what type you have. Darn tough have a um, guarantee where you can send them in, you get a new pair free. Um, in gingies, you got to replace them. The liners for me, they went very quickly and I was replacing them every two to 300 miles. I finally switched from the Injinji liner and darn tough combination to just using the Injinji hiking socks on their own. For me, they worked really well. Some other people didn't like them, but that became my solution. And those lasted about 700 miles on average. But those are approximately $25 a pair. Um, I also bought recovery socks for my plantar fasciitis. So again, talking in gear and back to kind of the injury illness thing you may to be you may needing to purchase some gear related to an injury that you've had so i was trying to purchase some plantar fasciitis specific things insoles and socks and things like that and like those plantar fasciitis socks were 25 dollars. so like all of this really starts adding up over the course of your through hike um and then another thing that i saw happening unfortunately a lot were people who ended up not liking or their gear just didn't work for them, what they started the trail with, and they were replacing it with something different on trail. Um, one of the big areas of that was just not packing warm enough gear in the beginning. I uh, saw a lot of people buying uh, mid layers that they hadn't packed or different base layers that were warmer um, as far as clothing goes. Uh, I did see some people actually completely switching out their sleep system, getting a higher R rated uh, mat, getting a warmer sleeping bag, or having their quilt sent home to be sent back to them for summer and buying a warmer bag for winter. Um, and I also saw some people having to switch out their packs. Um, maybe in their shakedown hikes, they were doing like 10 mile days and it was okay. But then once they started increasing mileage and they had that pack on them day after day after day, um, I saw some sores, people rubbing raw shoulders, their packs just weren't fitting them well, or maybe they had them overloaded for what the pack weight really should be. Um, so some people had to switch out packs. So there were some more expensive gear replacements um, that I saw, and that may be having to do with how well prepared you are before you even get on trail. Um, being honest, <laughs> but some of that is also just, you know, gear wears out and you got to replace things. Uh, my stove broke in Massachusetts, like 16, 1700 miles in, um, I had to go buy a new stove. Um, so that was a hundred dollars, uh, just a random thing. Um, there's other just small little gear things that you may need to pick up, um, a new buff, um, you know, new washcloth, uh, replacing usable items like your soap, your Purell, um, antibiotics, you know, your ibuprofen, like those types of things that you're using, you have to continually be replacing on trail as well. And a lot of people don't factor the cost of all of that, smaller things, but replacing it regularly into like, oh, I'm going to spend X, Y, Z's my budget for food. Well, you have things besides food that you may need to repair or replace as well. A lot of time on zeros is spent using gear aid and needle and thread and sewing up and patching gear so that you don't have to replace it, but then eventually you may just have to end up replacing it. Um, let's see if there's... Oh, another thing that I saw a lot of people having to replace was rain gear. <laughs> um, personally, I hate frog togs. They suck. Uh, some people get from Georgia to Maine with them, but I saw a lot of people buying better rain gear on trail um, or buying additional rain gear, like an umbrella that they didn't start the trail with. Um, and another thing that I saw people having to replace a lot was trekking poles. Um, either they snapped and broke or they just, you know, were wearing poorly. They ended up not liking the way, you know, they were comfortable with them. Or like my hiking buddy Stan, he accidentally threw them off of a bridge into the Lehigh River <laughs> and had to buy a new pair of trekking poles. Um, so you just never know. It could be an expensive gear replacement. It could be an inexpensive gear replacement, but you got to have some extra room in the budget for it. All right. Next point. Last point, actually. Number five, right? Yes. Number five. Your travel home at the end of your hike. 
whether you make it all the way to Katahdin and you're in Maine or you have to get off and end your through hike early, you got to get home. So people think about budgeting for getting to Georgia, but then they forget about they got to get back home at the end. And I'm going to talk about Maine specifically. It is not easy and it is not cheap. You are literally in the middle of no freaking where when you come out of the 100 mile wilderness at Baxter State Park. And it's all dirt roads. Uh, there's not a town there. Uh, Millinocket is the closest and it's a half hour. And there's not a proliferation of hostels and shuttles like there are elsewhere along the trail, which surprised me. I'm like, you know, this is the northern terminus. This is where people are starting and ending. You would think it'd be like Georgia, where there's a ton of shuttles and there just aren't. I found one, one shuttle driver that was based out of Millinocket. And it took me a while to find that. Um, I thought it'd be easy to get a rental car. I want, I had a dog, so I needed to get off trail and I wanted to go in the Millinocket, get an Airbnb. I wanted to get a rental car because I also wanted to go explore Maine for a while. I wanted to go to Acadia and the East Coast. Um, that was not easy <laughs> to make all of those arrangements. Um, so no, but no matter what, you've got to get from Baxter to Millinocket or Bangor or perhaps Portland where the major trains and airports are. And then you got to figure out your cost. Are you going to drive? Are you going to fly? Are you going to get a rental car? Like are, are friends and family coming up to meet you? You got to figure out those arrangements. Um, if you do get off trail and go back in the Baxter for hiking Katahdin, then you become a day hiker as opposed to a through hiker. And there's special permits and things you need to pay for for that. So like the end logistics of Baxter is kind of crazy. And it is not cheap to fly or even drive or get on a train out of Maine to wherever it is that you're going. Um, there's smaller airports, Bangor and Portland, so you're probably going to have a layover. Um, you may be able to get a direct flight to wherever you're going, but you're more than likely going to have a layover in like Boston or New York or Atlanta. Um, or you may, if you can get a direct flight, like I was able to get a direct flight from Boston to Atlanta and I had the rental car. So I drove, um, I think it was like four hours from where I was in Maine to Boston, got on my flight. I had Zobi. So again, if you're traveling with a dog, um, you have some extra expenses, um, and then flew direct from Boston to Atlanta where my RV was there. So yeah, just, you gotta remember it's a budget. Your flight prices that you're looking at in, again, inflation, um, or just seasonally changing, it may not be the $200 that you're looking at in February before you get on trail of how much it may cost you to fly home at the end of the trail. It might be $500. And what do you do? Do you wait for a couple of days for the flight price to change? Well, now you've got extra hostel or hotel nights or Airbnb or whatever it is that you're doing. You've got to figure out your arrangements from Baxter to one of these cities. Shuttles are expensive. Ubers are non-existent. Um, it's, it's kind of crazy. So budget a lot for the end of your through hike to get home. And hopefully if you have to end your hike early, you're somewhere near a major city and you can easily get a train or a flight that doesn't cost a fortune and you don't have to worry about shuttles and driving and all of that like you do when you get to Maine. All right, that's it. That is my expensive people forget to budget for their AT through hike. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, comment. If you've got more comments about things that you know hit you as an extra expense, I would love to do that may do a follow-up to this video. Farewell until our next video. Oh, what is that? He's like, I want to go back to sleep. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right. Bye. See you in my next video.